For someone who has wasted countless hours playing competitive titles only to get stuck at the same rank, the roguelike genre seemed to be the perfect fit. I mean, after all, my naive understanding of the genre was that you make some progress just to lose it all within the blink of an eye, a perfect representation of league promo matches. A free to play game where the only cost is the rest of your life. So after some quick research, I decided to give Dead Cells a shot. A game that warranted a dinner date with my controller before playing due to the number of inputs I had to perform at times. Dead Cells is a roguelike platformer inspired by Metroidvania style games which was released back in May 2017. Since the release, the game was named Best Action Game by IGN and Best Indie Game of the Year at Golden Joystick Awards. The best action games is Dead Cells! My early impression of Dead Cells was positive. I mean, a beautifully designed game slightly influenced by Middle Eastern culture where the healing item is finally something I can genuinely recommend. Like what the hell was an Estus Flask? What about Focus from Hollow Knight? That one was way out of my comprehension thanks to my goldfish-like attention span. But jokes aside, I will be covering three reasons why Dead Cells became the first roguelike title that I beat. There is often a synergy between a protagonist's behavior and their surroundings. This often helps foster a sense of immersion for the player. This is handled a bit differently in Dead Cells. In most other games that I have played, the protagonist and the game are usually on the same wavelength. In Dead Cells, they are not. Let's take a look at our headless protagonist. He makes his grand entrance as a slime that takes over a headless body. It is clear that he had just died and thankfully he's not a whiny baby like Subaru from ReZero when he comes back to life. Then he is met by a lovely knight who is eagerly waiting to welcome him. Despite expectations, you will quickly realize that the protagonist is somewhat different. He comes off as laid back and carefree. These laid back characteristics become more evident as you progress through the levels. For example, when you defeat the clock tower boss, instead of getting upset when the boss runs away, his response is, what was his problem? At times, he is very thick headed as he indulges in conversations with some shady characters. Overall, he reminds me of Saitama from One Punch Man. Dead Cells is a very punishing title and is packed with very intense gameplay. Nevertheless, even the NPCs are goofy at times. I was expecting to play as someone heroic, confident, or even charismatic. Instead, I was met with this carefree, laid-back, goofy protagonist who is at times dull-headed, although his blade and raw power are certainly not. This goofy presence made the game feel much less intense, and early runs feel less stressful. It synergized with the game just like how Yin and Yang would. In retrospect, from the trailers, it was pretty obvious that despite its harsh and punishing gameplay, it would be full of humor. Dead Cells is harsh at times, but it allows the players to approach the levels in different ways. In my opinion, there are two different types of players. First are the players that have decent reflex time who do not mind fighting the mobs head on. Second are the players that are better at maneuverability and movement who might prefer skipping the mobs. The game caters to both types by offering different weapons, mutations which are like passive skills and routes you can take to the boss room. There are so many different ways to approach this game and once you find your style, normal difficulty will become a piece of cake. Now the game is not your friend and the designs within each level are procedurally generated, meaning that none of your runs will be the same. Nevertheless, you will quickly get a good idea of which routes are most likely going to challenge your movement versus your capability to overcome mobs. This semi-freedom that the game gives the player helps a lot with tackling the early runs, providing a bit more fluid and less stressful experience. For those of you interested in the lore, you have to beat Dead Cells 6 times to gather all the information you need to solve the main story. And with each run, the game becomes more difficult. Nevertheless, the game's difficulty progresses at a fair rate, so you won't feel overwhelmed. Just put on your favorite music and start slashing away. Also, please read item descriptions thoroughly. Thoroughly. Thoroughly?
<笑>やったぜケンシロウの飛行をついたお前はもう死んでいる何 After finding your style and becoming decent at the game, it should take around 30 minutes on average to get to the final boss room. These short runs do a few positive things. It gives the player a sense of ease as they can now relax and explore other routes within the game. Most of us would think twice before exploring DLC or other free content before beating the final boss. It also provides the player with a boost of confidence so that they are more willing to finish the other 5 runs needed to finish the main storyline. The game is all about try, fail, learn, progress, die, learn, accomplish. I've heard from other players that if you are easily frustrated by dying, then this game may not be your cup of tea. I have to disagree. Keep in mind that I have yet to beat the higher difficulty runs, nonetheless, I believe that Dead Cells is the perfect game for those of you who have not given the roguelike genre a try. The game progresses at a very reasonable rate and lets the player understand all its steep mechanisms and different builds at their own pace. I have only one question for y'all. Are you weaker than Sobaru? Alright boys and girls, we reached the end of my video, this is Pashma and I'm outta here.